All right, everyone, we're doing something a little bit different this time. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing to my frog's tank. The goal was first to catch them. I only found her, so I guess I'll be catching them as I go through this. Basically, with a live planted tank, um, it needs to be cut back about once a year. This tank has been up for about six months, but since I changed the light to um, one that has a little bit of UV, my plants have been having to adjust. Um, and I've got a bunch of dead leaves and it's just starting to look a bit overgrown. So we're going to cut it back today and we're going to replace the substrate. I'm going to start by doing this carefully because I do have four other tree frogs in here. Um, but the biggest plant that's looking the worst right now is the Dracaena here. So hopefully I can just cut it off. And there's usually frogs hiding in here, so I do have to be careful when I pull it out. There's another one. So this is one of my males. He's quite a bit smaller than the girl that's already in here. I don't know if you can see her. But we're going to take him out. He's a bit of an escape artist. Three more to go. And as you can see, this plant just has a ton of just dead leaves, burn leaves from the, the new UV bulbs. And it looks like no more frogs on this, so that's just going in the trash. So we have a nice base here that it's gonna start to regrow from. And then I'm also going to take down this pothos. As you can see, it's kind of taking over in here and choking out some of my other plants. So I'm just going to cut this back. This stuff grows like crazy, so I'm not too worried about it being harmed if I cut it all the way back. And again, checking for frogs. I don't want to throw any frogs away accidentally. That looks clean. Now we can get back to these plants here that have been kind of choked away from the light. And we're just going to cut off all the dead leaves. Again, you do this about once a year in a viv just because the plants do tend to overgrow um, with good lighting and good watering. So that will give a couple of these a chance to kind of take over again. You can see all these leaves are looking a little bit a little bit dead or dying. Oh, and I found another one sleeping back there. The whole reason I'm taking them out is because I am messing around in this tank a lot um, and it can be really stressful on them. This one's actually just going to stay asleep in my hand. He's pretty lazy today. I know people have been asking for a build video and unfortunately this is about the closest that I can get to a build video. So bear with me, I have heard your requests, I just don't have room to build a new Viv at this time. I'm not 100% sure on the names of all of these plants, I have looked them up once before. Um, I can put a list maybe in the description you guys can take a look and see what plants I have. I'm pretty sure this one's, I've got a Chinese evergreen but I think I've taken that one out of the viv already. 
but they're just basically house plants that I find. Um, and for the frogs, the whole idea is I just want plants that are going to be sturdy enough that um, they can sleep on the leaves. Found number four. There we go. That's the last male, which means I just have one female that's hiding in here somewhere. And this plant actually is looking really, really rough. I think I'm going to cut back most of these leaves here. I just don't want anything with these brown ends. It just looks kind of ugly. So I'm just going to cut most of these back. extra light from the dracaena that I cut back, these guys will start coming in very quickly. The frogs will have plenty of cover in a couple of weeks. These are just going to be putting out a bunch of new leaves. These frogs like a lot of cover, but unfortunately that also means they're incredibly hard to find when you want to find them and the lights are still on. I'm sure she'll come out tonight. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be doing with this plant yet. I'll leave it up here for now. It's gotten a little tall to be in the foreground, but for now I'll leave it there. Okay, we've cut our plants back. That gives me a little bit more access to the base of the tank here. So now I'm going to be taking out all of the um, magnolia leaves and the sphagnum moss that I have as the substrate. I am going to wear a glove just because it's a little soggy and gross and I'm funny about that. Like I said, it's been about six months. Usually you want to do this every six to twelve months. I'm going to be doing a, um, a substrate change and also just cutting back all of the happy plants that have been growing very well in here. At this point you could, if you wanted to, also um, lay down more soil. I'm not going to do that because this still looks pretty good. It's still nice and dark and, 
and there's enough of it here for the plant still, so I won't be adding any more or doing a soil change. The next time I do this, I'll probably take off the top layer of soil also and add more. But since it's only been six months, the soil should still be pretty good. Still haven't found number five yet. Oh, where she's. Oh, actually, I did. I just found her. I'll take this glove off so I can catch her for you. Now, this female is the one that's always. Pretty sure she's the jumpy one, so should be fun to catch her. And there, sweetheart. Yep, there she goes. She's the only one out of all five that does not like to be handled. There we go. That was actually a lot easier than it ever has been before. So Five frogs in a temporary holding container. And as you can see now, it's pretty clean in here. I've gotten all the magnolia leaves, most of the sphagnum moss. We've cut everything back. Now we're ready to put down new substrate. For starters, I've got just some moist in sphagnum moss. And this just basically acts as a um, protection so the frogs don't, are not able to eat any of the dirt down here, the underneath. Because, um, you know, they dive for crickets and stuff and you really don't want them getting mouthfuls of soil. So we use the moss to keep them from ingesting any of that. You don't want them to become impacted. So just a thin layer of this pretty much everywhere. Um, this is the long fiber sphagnum moss, so it's got nice long strings. They're not really gonna be able to swallow any of this. And a little bit more back in the corner. And this sphagnum moss can be got, picked up at um, gardening stores, nurseries, pet stores. It is a little bit expensive, but it lasts a really long time. I've actually been able to, in other, in other tanks, wash it and reuse it. It's great stuff. Okay, so we've got some nice sphagnum moss. That's good, that's gonna protect the frogs from eating dirt. And then, just in case, because we really don't want them accidentally ingesting the moss either, because that will impact them also, I picked up some magnolia leaves. These I got from outside. They've already been washed, boiled, rinsed off, um, so they're completely clean. And with these, we're just going to layer them all over the tank. They do provide some hiding places for crickets, which obviously isn't ideal. Um, but since my frogs are pretty much eating off the tongs now, I don't have to worry about crickets getting loose in here very often. Um, and I've got, you know, different sizes. I've got some larger ones and smaller ones. Basically the idea is you just cover up as much of, as much of the moss as you can. I know you can also find these as um, Petco's and PetSmart's also. They're starting to sell um, like leaf litter type. Um, basically you want either magnolia or um, I think even oak leaves. Um, it's not really a matter of toxicity, it's more that these these kinds of leaves take a lot longer to break down. They don't tend to mold and, and um, kind of disintegrate in the tank as fast. Um, and as you could see from earlier, I mean these leaves are just, they've broken down a little bit but not much. I mean after six months they're still pretty well intact. So. That's pretty much what we want. And they are pretty dry now. I'm gonna have to water them down. That'll make them a little bit softer. They'll lay better on the moss. And I'm gonna leave room for their water bowl here. The smaller ones in the back. I 
pick up lots of extra. It's always better to have more than you need. And there you have it. We'll add the frogs and be able to watch this thing kind of regrow and cover up all these ugly zip ties that I have in here. It should take a few weeks, but that's pretty much how you, the, the six month and 12 month maintenance on a planted vivarium. Thanks for watching.